So now that I have the basic components inside my scene, um, I want to start to think a little bit about lighting. And if I, if I give this a quick render right now, you're going to see that I actually don't have any lights inside the scene. And in fact, the entire scene is dark. And that's because I built a, a, a street light and it includes lights. And the minute that you include any kind of light inside a scene in Cinema 4D, the auto lights or the modeling lights get turned off. So I, I kind of have this um, strange setup right now where I have no lights inside my scene with the exception of this little street light over here which is killing off all of the other auto lights inside the scene so this is a great opportunity um, to set up some some uh, fairly simple and straightforward environmental effects uh, that will help with uh, the rendering so I'm gonna jump into my render settings and I want to point out that I have turned on global illumination already so I went into effects and I chose global illumination it's now here available inside uh, my my render options. Now I'll take a closer look um, at a couple of the the global illumination settings a little bit later, um, but I just wanted to point out that I've already turned that on. Now I want to set up some some real simple lights, and what I'll do is I'll I'll go over to the light tab here, and I'm going to get started by choosing an infinite light. Now, as I've mentioned before, an infinite light is a light that emulates uh, the sun or the moon or a light source that's infinitely far away. So um, it doesn't matter where we move or where we place this light. The important factor is what its direction is or what its rotation is. And an infinite light points down its Z axis. Okay, so I can see its blue axis and uh, the light is pointing in that direction. I'll give it a quick render. And you can see that the light is coming straight from the side or straight down the Z axis, which is not at all what I want. Um, so I'll just grab the rotation here and I'll give this a quick rotate. So I'll point it in a different direction and I'll start to point it down. Okay, so I'll just kind of play with uh, the direction of the light here until I get the effect that I want. And so what I'm thinking here is that I kind of want the shadows to fall across the street. So once I turn on shadows, so I'm just gonna rough in the light so I can see that I have kind of the back side of the building lit. Now, I'm gonna select that light, and I'm gonna add a little bit of color. I kinda of wanna warm this up a little bit, so I'll add just a little bit of orange to it. Now, a little bit of color is gonna go a long way. I'll say okay, you can see that immediately the whole scene changes its cast. I'm gonna take the intensity down uh, just a bit. Now remember, when you're lighting things with or without global illumination, uh, when I render this, we're going to see that um, the, you know, the lighting isn't too intense, and we'll come back in with a fill light, and we'll continue to play with some of the variables. Um, but whether I have global illumination turned on or global illumination turned off, we're going to get very different results. So I've introduced a light, and that's providing the primary key light. And uh, it doesn't look like much, doesn't look great right now, but with just a few tweaks, I think this will start to look pretty good. The first thing I'm going to do since I've already set the color, and I'll go back and adjust this a little bit later, and I've already lowered the intensity just a bit, I'm going to go into the shadow setting, and I'm going to turn uh, the shadows to ray traced hard. Now, in the past, we've always been looking at soft shadows, and soft shadows are, are really great for uh, details. Um, but you'll notice that if you turn on soft shadows with an infinite light, um, you're going to start to lose a lot of the detail in the shadows. Now, there's some ways to control that, but the easiest thing to do is just choose a ray traced or hard shadow. Then I'll give that a quick render and we'll start to see some, some uh, very different results. Now, I can already start to see in the render preview uh, that we're casting these very dark shadows now. Uh, in fact, it's, it's creating shadow to the point where I'm losing a lot of visible information, but already you can see that the, the, the quality of the light has changed dramatically. So the next thing that I think that I need to do is get some kind of fill light into the equation. Now, I could use another infinite light uh, and have it kind of cast coming from an opposite direction. But I think for the sake of the demo, what I'll do is I'll just introduce a simple point light or an omni light, and I'll just kind of move this up and away. And what I'm gonna do with this light is I'm gonna create some contrast. Now, my, my infinite light is kind of coming from over in this direction over here, and it's casting a, a slight gray, or excuse me, a slight orange uh, kind of color. And so I wanna complement that and what I'll do is I'll go back to my point light and I'll complement that with its complementary color. So I'll, I'll shift this towards blue and I'll say, okay, I'm gonna take that intensity way down. Maybe I'll take it down to 35 for now just to see, see what that looks like. And I'll give that a quick render. And that's still 
way too intense. So I'll continue to take that down, but I'm kind of starting to get the qualities that I want. I'm getting this, this sort of orange light coming in that's fairly intense. And I'm starting to fill that information back in from the other side with a blue light. Now that blue is a little too intense. And even though I, I like kind of like the intensity of it, it starts to look very much like a night lit scene, which is something that maybe I'll want to go for here a little bit later. Um, I'll just take that blue down quite a bit. Now it seems, it looks fairly strange right now. And a lot of that strangeness, um, even though the quality of the light is, is really kind of what I'm going for, most of it, uh, most of this kind of odd quality is coming from the fact that the background is pitch black. You know, right now I'm still dealing with that default background and I can take care of that really quickly simply by introducing a sky into the equation. And so I can introduce a sky uh, by going under this environments tab here, and this is the place where I can create a floor or a physical sky or some, some uh, uh, a fog effect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce just a simple sky. Uh, and once I introduce that sky into the equation, I have this sky object, and you can think of a sky as the inside of an enormous sphere. And we can map images, we can, we can apply colors to it, and just right out of the box, I'll just give that a quick render, um, by default, it's picking up uh, this, this kind of blue gray quality. So already that really dramatically changes the scene in terms of what the context is and how this is getting rendered. Now I'm going to jump into my content browser and from my content browser, I'm going to go to presets, prime materials, basic, and inside basic, I have a sky object and I'll just double click on that. And when I do, it becomes available down here in the, um, in the material manager. And I'm just going to use this temporarily just so you get a sense of, of what, you know, the scene could look like. And this is just a simple sky texture and I'll drag and drop that sky onto my sky object. And now when I render, I get this uh, kind of a more of a, um, the feel of a sky where I'm getting some clouds, I'm getting the blue sky, and it starts to make a lot more sense with the rest of the scene. So immediately... <clears throat> I have a very different quality to uh, my scene. So just by, by you know, starting to play with the lights and uh, uh, apply a sky, you can really start to get some different results. So, so there's my render with just throwing some real quick lights into the equation. Um, I have a lot of noise. I got a very noisy scene. If you look at it and in the screencast, you're gonna see this, uh, you know, pretty clearly because of the compression, but, um, but in addition to, to, the, to the screencast, I have a lot of noise, uh, a lot of grain uh, inside my render, and that has everything to do with my current, uh, my current global illumination settings. So um, I have mine set to QMC, and uh, by default, you'll probably start off with a, a global illumination setting, the GI mode of IR still image. Now there's, um, uh, these IR are, are typically reserved for indoor scenes. The QMC is for an outdoor scene, and there's a combination of both indoor and outdoor scenes. And it's really just uh, translates on, on, on how the um, light is being calculated inside the scene. Um, I, when I want to add some grain to my renders, rather than doing it in a post-production environment, um, a lot of times I'll go into this QMC mode and start to play with um, uh, some of the different sample settings and some of the detail settings. So. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna gonna stick with the general settings. I'll, I'll change it to QMC mode, but if you're starting to see too much grain, uh, you can either go back to IR mode or you can do a combination of IR and QMC. Now you'll notice that there's also um, a couple of different options when you start combining the two methods or when you're choosing the IR. There's still image and camera animation. Uh, and we'll start to discuss those details a little bit later, but in a nutshell, um, Obviously, if you're not creating an animation, you're gonna to wanna to use the still image because then you only have to calculate the light one time. The minute that you start creating animations or having an object move something like the camera uh, for the sake of presentation, uh, you'll want to choose one of these camera animations. Uh, what that will do is that will uh, recalculate the light each time uh, for each scene as the, the point of view starts to change. But we'll talk a little bit more about that um, just a bit later. So. Um, with regard to global illumination, make sure that at least you're aware of some of the basic settings under the general tab of changing the GI mode and uh, experiment what the different uh, quality is between IR and QMC and then combining the two. So just, just to see what kind of different results you get.
So um, continue to rough out your scene, introduce some lights, and at this point, I have uh, most of the information that I need from a design standpoint. I have most of the buildings. I'll, I'll, I'll throw in a couple more buildings here, but I have all the basic components for my street, and now I can start to build out my um, city block. So, you know, I just have a few things roughed out here. Um, I have one each of the city tiles. Actually, I have a couple of duplicates here, but, um, you know, I just have a couple of, uh, uh, of my blocks starting to grid out. And so now I'm gonna to start to think about some of the compositions that I wanna render. So I wanna zoom down here and start to get some street level view renders. And so I wanna to start to think about what's happening back here inside my scene. And obviously over here, and I wanna to start to fill the gaps. And so I'll start to use some of these blocks here um, to create uh, you know, a, a more fully realized scene. So, uh, so experiment with the lights, start to look at some of the options in Global Illumination and we'll catch up in the next presentation and start to talk a little bit more about some of the other options that we have uh, when it comes to rendering and then we'll take a, a, a quick look at animation. We'll catch up in the next presentation.